Hi, and welcome back to the Programming in Ninox Training Series. In our last class, we looked at outer joins, or the relationships between two different data stacks, or data families. Parent-child relationships are represented in this manner, with tables inside of another table. Let's look at the transaction table. We now see that this parent transaction table has a child, and that is the transaction line item table. This is what we call an inner join. We can also note that the transaction line item table has an outer join or an external relationship to the product table. These two relationships enable us to define a transaction, have multiple line items on that transaction, and have each individual line item refer to a particular product in our inventory. Let's look at this combination of the external and the internal or parent-child relationship in operation. And here I see the child represented as an embedded multi-line object. I can see a breakdown of everything that's sold. That's what that child line item table allows me to do. A child table allows me to associate multiple records with a single record in the parent table. Remember we also had that second external relationship where each line item was linked to a particular product. This allows me when I go in to create my transaction line items to pick from a list of all of my available inventory. So this is a very powerful capability and a very easy way for us to define the details of a single record with lots of other records that are in a different table, but a table that is related, has a familial relationship, child to parent. Before we talk about how to build the parent-child relationship, Let's make sure we understand the advantages or possibly disadvantages of this parent-child inner join versus the outer join or the external relationship. The first thing to understand is in an external relationship, for example, here in this line item, if I were to delete this line item, I could still have this product record in my inventory table because the inventory table is a separate data stack as we see here. Here's my line items and in a different family here's my product inventory. If I delete a record that's part of an external relationship the other record will not get deleted. However, in a parent-child relationship if you delete the parent, you will also lose all of the children. Let's look at our child table. Here we see all the line items for all of our transactions. If I go back to this transaction and delete it, where a moment ago we had three line items, now we have one because the parent of the other two was deleted. A child record cannot exist without its parent also existing. So keep this in mind when you're establishing relationships. This transaction line item record is related specifically to this transaction parent table. And while you can have external links to and from a child table, the concept is if one record, if a child record would be irrelevant without its parent, then you want to have that parent-child relationship. However, we use an external join when there's a relationship but not a dependency. The existence of a product does not depend on the existence of line items documenting the sale of a product. Let's now go in and see how we built this parent-child relationship. Here I am back in my transaction table. 
And here we have what is now a freestanding transaction line item table. Now the first thing we did when creating this table is establish a relationship from the transaction line items to the product. In our last class, we built those external relationships by using the relation to shortcut here at the bottom of the form screen. In this instance, we're going to build that relationship in a slightly different manner. Here I am in the transaction line item table, which is about to become a child table. The first step is to establish the relationship from the child to the parent. The transaction line items table is going to be a child of the transaction table. This gives us a relationship that now looks like this. We have our transaction table and we have the transaction line items pointing to it. But we want to take that relationship one step further. So I'm going to go back to the transaction line item table. I'm going to open up this reference field that connects or refers from transaction line items to the transaction. And I'm going to indicate that this is a composition relationship. The family is composed of the parent and all of the children. So when we say, yes, this is a composition, we are saying that this table is a child of the parent table that was defined in the relationship. And here we see the transaction line items table, which just a moment ago was sitting outside, is now inside the transaction family. It's part of the transaction stack. Here is a parent table called accounting that has a child called transactions. Transactions is a parent that has a child called transaction line items. That makes transaction line items the grandchild of accounting. Compare that to this relationship where we have one parent and three children. These children are siblings. Continuing with this discussion, let's go in and look at the transaction line item table. We also want to have that outer join, that outer relationship to the product table. We can use our relation to shortcut or I can go in here into my relationship fields panel, select product and drag it into position right there. This will now give me the ability to look up all the products in my inventory, select one, and have that be the product sold on any particular line item. By default, all reference fields are pop-up fields, but again, as I did in the previous class, I'm going to hide the fields that I don't need to see, save those changes, and then indicate that instead of a pop-up, I want a drop-down or a combo box. And now I can drop down and see all of my inventory items and pick one. You'll remember a moment ago when I picked an inventory item, it automatically filled in the default unit price. This is something that we learned about in class 113 when we talked about triggers. After I have updated the product field, I want a line of code to be executed. And the line of code specifically is the unit price in the line item table should be equal to the price in the product table. Now, with this trigger in place, when I select a product, the unit price is updated. But because this is a field unto itself in the line item table, I can override the default at runtime. That's the parent-child relationship. In our next class, we're going to look at a hybrid relationship called the direct link or the direct relationship. This is a version of the inner and outer join that is excellent when you have a huge database, 
tens or hundreds of thousands of records, and you need to very quickly compute, transform, and or display a large data set. I'll see you in the next class. Visit us at www.nioxis.com. Here, you can learn about different Ninox solutions. You can get tech support through our Ninox Help Desk, which is available seven days a week, or you can schedule private one-on-one -on -one concierge sessions for training, or we can help you build your application. And if you haven't done so already, sign up for our free Ninox Learning Lab. We do this every Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. in the UK, 6 p.m. Central European Time. These free hour-long sessions enable you to learn more about Ninox, features, functions, and solutions. We have open Q&A where you can get answers to all your Ninox questions, and you can meet other members of the global Ninox community. We look forward to seeing you there.